So today, Cisse, uh, somewhat of a, of a, I guess you could say a little bit of a mystery, but really a lot of our faith is still pure mystery. You know, there's so, so, so much to, to be known uh, that we'll know at some point, uh, usually when we're called to our death, uh, that, that where it all becomes clear. Okay, but we have these uh, angels. Uh, St. Augustine says we have to, when we talk about angels, we have to specify whether we're talking about the nature or their office, meaning like what their purpose is, what they do. Okay, so what angels are, okay, are spirits. Okay, spirits that never, never formed or animated a body. Okay, so these are just pure spirits, no body to them, okay, no, no matter, no flesh, or anything like that. Pure spirits, okay, that's what they are. What they do is what their name is, their office, okay, angels, which means messengers. Angels are attendants to God's throne, meaning whatever divine mission that God wishes to bestow often to us, a message, okay? And we see in sacred scripture a lot, what does he do? He sends an angel, an attendant to the throne of God. We hear a lot about that in the book of Revelation. Now today's feast day, the archangels will say, well, what's the difference? The difference is that these three have a name to them. <laughs> That's really what makes them archangels. We know what their name is, scripture has revealed the name of these three to us. Okay, so in our first reading, we heard about that of Michael, okay, the archangel Michael in the book of Revelation. I believe he also makes an appearance in the book of Daniel. Uh, not in this option, but I'm pretty sure he does, okay. Michael is a defender, okay. He's the one in Revelation that we hear about battling Satan. He's the one to go to when we face temptation. He's the one when, when we struggle with sin or there's some sort of demonic presence, you know, which is possible. St. Michael, along with a person like our Blessed Mother, okay, are powerful intercessors okay, against evil. That is his office as angel, as a defender, protector, and then we have Gabriel, okay? Where do we know him from? We know him from the Gospel of Luke. He's the one that was sent by God, okay, to the Blessed Mother to deliver a message. We go to Gabriel, we ask him to intercede for us, okay, when we need to discern God's word, okay? Gabriel, uh, Gabriel bestowed the message upon our Blessed Mother, the story, the moment of salvation, so to discern and to really uh, give ourselves over to God's word and to his message, okay, Gabriel is, Gabriel is a helper with that. And then finally, Raphael, who's predominant in the book of Tobit, okay, one of our deuterocanonical books, one of those books that are in the Catholic Bible but not in the, uh, the Protestant Bible, okay, as if there's two Bibles, but you know what I mean, okay? Uh, but Tobit, what? He's a healer. Tobit, I'm sorry, um, Raphael helps Tobit, okay, as far as um, his mission and his purpose in that book. Eventually, Tobit's eyes get blind and Raphael heals him. So, what do we go to Raphael for? We go for healing with that, okay, and everything that we need, both physical but also, most importantly, spiritual healing. Okay, so those are our three archangels. On Saturday, we do the Feast of the Guardian Angels, and we'll talk more about that uh, today. But I think overall, in a nutshell, to kind of tie all this together, um, I have to admit this is kind of a hard homily to preach on because this, um, you know, that's what I gave you is pretty much it. That's what, that's what we know about angels, you know, that... Uh, that that's all. That's all we have. A lot, a lot of it is, you know, tradition and stuff like that. It's. I just want to, one quick side note. You have to be careful, okay, when we deal with these angelic beings because you have these new age movements also that talk about angels and talking to your guardian angel and naming your guardian angel. You gotta you gotta avoid all that, okay, and be careful because 
um, a lot of times what they're actually doing is they're summoning and talking to demons. Okay, so it's a, it's a world where we're kind of limited. We, we, we pray to our archangels. We ask for their intercession. We, uh, you know, pray to our, as I said on Saturday, we pray to our guardian angel and ask for their help and their protection. We do all these things. You just have to be careful when you get to stuff outside of the church and traditions that aren't related to the church and to her teaching. It's a very dangerous area to enter into. Okay, so I just want to just caution you with that because a lot of times you, you go to these uh, retreat houses and, you know, there's the pamphlets and brochures right there on the front desk, you know, um, and you have people coming in and doing all sorts of uh, uh, strange things. And um, like I said, a lot of it is actually, they don't know it, but it's actually demonic. So you have to be careful of all that. But overall, the angels tells us that these are God's special help protection, guidance in our lives. You know, these angels, they're attendants to God's throne. They're there at God's disposal in the sense of, you know, whatever God needs done, what does he send? He sends one of his angelic beings to our aid, okay? Archangels and the angels are a reminder of God's ever and abiding presence and protection among us. May God bless you.